Hello, hello. It's been a long time since I made a video, and some of my setup has changed, the microphone settings. But it's been a long time since I talked to you, and I felt like today I really needed to step back up to the plate and share some things with you. As most of us, I've been trying to figure things out for myself in life and wondering why, you know, I don't generally feel over happiness all the time and full of joy and love and wondering why that comes and goes and fades with time sometimes with you know situations you're having in life and I kind of once again put myself up against it in my life and it's a funny thing as you go through this awakening process is spiritual awakening because there are different awakenings and they're not all spiritual they may have spiritual aspects but there's a difference when you have a spiritual awakening, as we so call it. And it really gets into where your appetite for life changes because things don't nourish you anymore like they used to that the world enjoys in general. There's things that you are more concerned with, with meditation and prayer and holy works of, uh, from people's books and readings like the Bible and many, many others. And it just takes on a new flavor of life for you and trying to get to the bottom of what's not working for you is very tricky because we live in a very strange dream what we call life and one of the books that I picked up recently that I've had on my shelf for over eight years right beside the four agreements but never actually read never actually digest that's a problem with me and hopefully most of you folks don't do this but I burn through a book and I really don't absorb it I don't apply it I hear the concepts and they stay in my head but they don't sink down into my heart or in my soul into actual life actions and that's where the difference is and what I want to share with you today is this book. It's by Don Miguel Luis. You may have heard of it. It's called The Mastery of Love. It's a Toltec wisdom book. I hope you can see all of it. And it's not very thick. And it's got a nice little, you know, so you can mark what you read last. But I'm going through chapter at a time and just really contemplating the chapter after I get done. I don't just burn to the next one. And I'm going through it more than once because things are resonating with me. And this book is magical in the sense the mastery of love, maybe the title throws you a little, but what it digs down into is the human condition of this world that we're living in and why you're not happy. And it's not your fault and what the escape clause is, or if there is such a thing. Because honestly, you get to a level in this awareness and you realize the only thing beating you up in this life is you. And that's what I come to realize. The only one holding a hammer and hitting me in the head and making me hurt all the time is me. I can't blame anything else out around me. If I do, I live as a victim. And this book goes very thoroughly into the condition the sickness that this world has in the mind. We are suffering from a disease. We're ruled by fear. And this book plays it out and it shows you how to change those dynamics. It shows you how to tune back in through realizing your truth and not running from it, staring yourself right in the face and being what you really are, not what you think you are. And then you forgive yourself. I always knew forgiveness was key and the church teaches this, but it teaches it in a different way. This book, to me, is the way Christ intended for you to accept forgiveness. And it's huge. Once you sit down and chapter 11 goes over these three tools, truth, forgiveness, and then self-love. And it's not a selfish love. And that's the other thing that this world is full of and eat up with is what we call love at its roots is nothing more than selfishness. I'll do something for you if you'll do something for me. Thousands and thousands of us are married, are married to people, we're in partnerships, relationships, and that's the dynamics that play out. And this shows you how to shift that, but it starts with you, it starts with me. And you have to go inside and get real with yourself. And this book literally is a roadmap. It helps you do that if you really stop and read it. 
and not just run through it like it's another quick read and oh boy, it's some new spiritual gobble gobble. I'm guilty of that. We get high off spiritual concepts. There's a stage in this awakening or in our lives where we just buzz from one new shiny spiritual thing to the next. And that's part of the process. You're developing a foundation. But there's a point where you stop and you start to get serious and go deep. And when you start doing that, things change and shift. And you quit being a victim, you quit judging yourself, and you quit being so hard on yourself. That's what this book really brings to the front forefront, is how much self-talk that we're doing that is a lie. We lie to ourselves all the time about what we think we are. And we suffer for it. And this explains all of that in such a beautiful, poetic way that I can't even do it justice by talking to it to you, even if I mention a few concepts. Unless you read this book and get it in the context and the way that Don Miguel Ruiz laid it out, it won't really come to life for you. And until it comes to life for you, it's just a bunch of ink on a pa piece of paper. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you today because this book literally was an element in saving my life at this point in my journey. Because I was up against it myself and I wasn't happy with me. And I knew it wasn't the world out there that was the problem. But it's one thing to realize you're the one torturing yourself in your mind. But how do you stop picking up the hammer and hurting yourself and start to love yourself and that's why I'm sharing this this morning because if you're hurting and if you're looking for some answers this could very well be the book that makes the difference for you there's millions of articles out there in spiritual books and authors that have the same if not similar message in different ways but this one touched my heart deeply and that's why I wanted to share it with you today. Hopefully, that me shining my light into my darkness will help you be able to do the same and stop the suffering. Because you have a choice. You get to play in this world and have your dreams. And you can create the perfect hell or you can create the perfect heaven. There's still a dream, but you have the choice and the power to do either one and we usually fluctuate between. But knowing and realizing you have that power changes everything. So I send you much love. If my heart could touch your heart, then I've succeeded with my message this morning. I love you bunches, and I wish you the best. And I honestly, honestly mean that. Cross the board with much love. Signing off, Wes. Well, it feels